People often ask me what I do for a living. One thing, I train people to win fights. That includes professional fighters, and that includes everybody else. From every walk of life, because remember, life is a fight. Life beats us up, life eventually kills us. So, it's up to us to find the way to fight back most efficiently. Whether that's at work or whatever. Life is a fight. And that's the one thing I do. Train people to win fights. Helio Gracie said, I do not fight to win I fight to not lose. And if you watch his old Valle Tudo fights, you can see that mentality. He'd often spend five minutes on the bottom in side control, being side mounted with a, a larger, stronger opponent on top of him. And in a no time limits fight, you can afford to do that. In modern MMA, you cannot. If you spend five minutes on the bottom, you have lost. But well, that's step one, survival. It's the very first level. To fight to not lose. I have a student came into my gym a number of years ago. He was fat, he was out of shape. He'd never exercised before, never trained, never done any sport. This local Shanghainese guy named Roy. And after one minute of the warm up, you know, very simple things. <gasps> He was hyperventilating. He couldn't continue. But today, years later, he's done about 20 amateur fights, boxing matches, Muay Thai, K1, kickboxing, MMA, jiu-jitsu, and he's won most of them. He's won most of them in impressionable style. Knockouts, TKOs, good fighter. Totally different guy. You look at him now, he's lean. He's strong, he's healthy. Didn't happen all at once. Early on, everybody tapped him out when they rolled. Everybody was beating him. One roll would yield 50 taps. But after some time, I rolled with him for about five minutes and I didn't catch him in a submission. He survived, he spent the whole time on the bottom, but he survived. And afterwards, he was so happy. Yes! He lifted up his arms like he just won a fight, like I always tell my students to do. Lift up those arms after every single round, like you just won a fight. Get that mindset here, get it here. Also helps you breathe better and recover faster. And he was so happy and he looked at me and he said, I survived, I did it! I made it a whole round without tapping out once. He was so happy celebrating that victory. It's important to celebrate the small victories. The second level. Marcelo Garcia, he said, it is not enough to want to win. You have to want to train to win. Everybody wants to win. Everybody wants to win, but not everybody wants to work. If you want to win and win consistently at a level worth winning at, you must work for it. Remember, hard work pays off. That old aphorism is absolutely true. If you want the result, you must work for it. There's no way around that, there's no shortcut, there's no exception to that rule. No exceptions whatsoever. And we have to want to do it, because if we don't want to do the work, eventually we'll find an excuse not to. When the alarm goes off early in the morning, if we don't want it, 
It's going to be so easy to hit snooze. Tell ourselves, tomorrow, tomorrow. But guess what, champions? Do it today. You want to win fights and win consistently? How do we do it? We work today. That's true in the cage, it's true in the ring, and it's true in every other aspect of life. You want to get where you want to be, you must do the work today. There's a third level. Breaking your opponent. We must learn how to survive. That's imperative. That's a skill set we simply cannot do without. We must have the will to win. We must have the will to train to win. But we must also press forward and work to break the opposition that stands in front of us. I had a student, this girl from Australia, named Megan. Megan, if you're out there watching, hi. All the way from Shanghai, China. How you doing? And she had her first amateur boxing match. I was very happy to see the result. She won the fight, but she didn't just win the fight. She did something extraordinary. She broke her opponent within 30 seconds. She was fighting this other girl, a girl named Rebecca, who was, you know, technically good. You know, I was watching her train, watching her warm up, her shadow boxing, mid work, bad, bag work, her footwork was on point. Her punches were crisp, pretty, technically good, sound. Her head movement was there. And for about 30 seconds, she looked pretty good. But. When Megan put the pressure on and laid it on thick and was unrelenting and every time she took a hit, kept pressing forward, showing no weakness, showing her opponent, I am unbreakable. Nothing you can do can hurt me. And in spite of being tired and fatigued as the rounds went on, same work ethic. And I noticed something, I saw a change in Rebecca's eyes from confidence. Okay, this is gonna be fun, this is gonna be good. I'm gonna go out there and do, do my best. And when she was confronted with an unstoppable force, she was broken. I saw that look, I've seen it so many times before on so many fighters, that look that says, this isn't fun anymore. Oh man, I don't like this. Ah, oh, it would be easier not to. Let me out of here. Get me away from the savage. And often they'll, they'll stick it through. Rebecca, to her credit, she survived. You know, that first level, she survived, made it three rounds, made it to the decision, didn't go in her favor. Megan won. Congratulations again. Awesome fight. She survived, but she was broken. How many times have you seen a fight where one fighter was beaten, decisively beaten, lost the decision, got submitted, tapped out, or even got knocked out, and then afterwards started to complain, yeah, well, but he, yeah, he's not really better than me because, you know, it, it just wasn't my day, and they come up with all these excuses for, you know, they're not really a loser. I didn't really lose, that's not my fault. Because they're beaten but not broken. It's not enough to survive, it's not enough to, to win on points, it's not enough to win according to the rules of the sport. You must break your opponent. And I'm not talking about inflicting injuries or maiming or damaging them although that is part of the process of a fight. 
It's not checkers. It's not holding hands. It's a fight. Talk about breaking them up here and here. Destroying their will to continue. Will is a fascinating word. Think about how we move our hands, for example. How does a hand move? We think, and it moves. We will it to move, and it moves. I want my hand to do this, and so it does this. But what about when we're tired? What about when we're fatigued? When the later rounds of the fight, we've taken some damage, we've spent loads of energy, and the muscles start saying, ah, it would be easier not to. That little voice inside of you says, yeah, but it would be easier not to. Yeah, let's take a break. Relax, you don't have to do this. Shut it down. Shut it out. That little voice is not you. It does not own you. It does not control you. Listen to your own will. Because no matter how fatigued you are, you can will your body to move the way you need it to move. You must see. You must see it here first. And then will it into reality. Now, if you haven't done that in the gym beforehand, if you have not done that in training, it doesn't happen magically in a fight. It can't. You must have an indomitable will. And this is not something you'll pick up from a uh, fight tips video on the internet. We don't learn it that way. The only way we learn to break somebody by putting the pressure on them is to experience that pressure day in and day out. This type of learning does not come without the context of reality. It cannot come without the context of re experience, real life experience, mad time, time under tension. So you want to get out there, you want to survive, great. You want to win a fight, great. But if you want to thrive in this sport of mixed martial arts, you must become an expert at breaking the opposition that stands in front of you. 